Radio on Sirius XM. I want to welcome everybody who's here from all around the country and all around the world, and welcome everyone listening on Elvis Radio and watching at Graceland.com. And a special shout out to our friends at the Arches. They're in London, the London Bridge, the special direct from Graceland exhibit there. They are tuned in watching this morning. And we're excited to announce that exhibit will be extended through April. So welcome to our friends uh, in London. And also, I met a group the other night from England. Uh, they're here somewhere. I know they are. And they mentioned that every year they watch the birthday ceremony and the Elvis Week ceremony and they dream of getting here. And they're here this year. So let that serve as a reminder for all of you watching and listening. You get here when you can get here and we'll welcome you with open arms when you do. All right, let's get the uh, ceremony underway. Y'all ready? Please welcome to the stage the CEO of Elvis Presley Enterprises, Jack Soden. Once again, you, you all have been here before. This is my short opportunity just to, on behalf of so many of us, welcome you all. Because you're here, we're here, as you know. And, uh, and it's just a very special day. And we've got some real, really neat surprises here coming up in a few minutes. So I will sit down. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. And yes, we do have some surprises later on. We're going to unveil something very special. So it's going to be a historic day. Graceland, those happen a lot here. Please welcome the President and CEO of Memphis Tourism, Mr. Kevin King. Welcome back to Memphis. January 8th, what is today? I'll tell you, Saturday, it's one of the events at the guest house. I was talking to some people and I was saying, where are you guys from? They said, oh, we're from Ireland. Oh, we're from Belgium. I want to know how many people here are not from Memphis. Well, thank you so much on behalf of the tourism and hospitality industry. 50,000 strong. Thank you for being here. We love you. We love Elvis. And you are the reason. Well, all this exists because of you, the fans. 89 years after his birth to keep the spirit of Elvis alive. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Pleased to welcome to the stage now a gentleman whose vision and, and passion for Elvis Presley and Graceland, you can literally see it all around you. He's committed to bringing Elvis into the future for future generations. Please welcome the managing partner of Elvis Presley Enterprises, Mr. Joel Weinshanker. Hello, everybody. I'm a little cold. Hopefully you're only a little cold. So, how many of you watched the NBC Christmas special? Did you love it? Yeah! My favorite part, beyond all those amazing acts, and just one, one was better than the other, uh, was when Riley opened the door, and you know she not only physically opened that door, um, but what she said wasn't, wasn't what the script had said, it wasn't what she was supposed to say, um, but Riley being her own person, uh, and Riley being you know, really the future of Graceland, uh, what she said was, it's so great to have music back in the house. Uh, and that's really going to be the theme of the next two years. Uh, Y'all are going to be amazed at how much music is going to be back in this house, on this property, what we're going to build to uh, make that happen. Uh, and I know everybody is hopefully trying to think about what the surprise is for today. <laughs> But when we talk about bringing Elvis's music back in the house, uh, I think this piece will uh, make everybody very happy. It made me very happy when I first became aware of the opportunity. Uh, but when we talk about Elvis, we talk about Memphis, we talk about the Memphis sound, we talk about what Memphis meant to music and arts. Uh, and it's really my pleasure to introduce uh, the new mayor of Memphis, Paul Young, who you know, as he will so articulately say, wants to bring more of that back to Memphis because, you know, Graceless is Me Graceland is Memphis and Memphis is Graceland. So I'd like to introduce the new mayor of Memphis, Paul Young. 
Good morning, everybody. Some of you may or may not know that I started my radio and TV career right here in Memphis on WHBQ. And it's always a pleasure to come back home. And this is home to me, not California, Memphis, Tennessee. I want to say hello to my wife, Sandy. Sandy, take a bow. Didn't she cute? Did I marry up or what? Also, some of you may realize and remember or recall that I was there. I, in fact, I'm the only living person of six people who were at WHBQ. You look Radio. great. You look great. By Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what the three stages of man are? What? Youth, middle age, and you look great. <laughs> so I don't know whether that should be a compliment or not. But I was there that night that Elvis was discovered. Sam Phillips walked in. I just happened to be there that evening. I was morning man, but I was at the station showing some of my friends from Jackson, Tennessee around the station. And I heard this, I heard this commotion coming out of Dewey Phillips studio. So I went in and it turns out that Sam Phillips, founder of Sun Records, had walked in with this acetate uh, a recording that he had made two hours earlier by this truck driver named Elvis Aaron Presley. It was called That's All Right Mama. Now, if Dewey Phillips, who was the hottest thing in town on radio, with a show called Red Hot and Blue, 9 to Midnight, if he played your record and it got a good positive reaction, you knew you had a hit. Well, he not only played That's All Right Mama, played it 14 times in a row. That's all people wanted to hear. Switchboard lit up like a Christmas tree. And from that night forward, well, as the rest is history. But I was there that night, and I had the pleasure of being designated to call Mr. and Mrs. Presley to find out where this son of theirs was, because naturally we wanted him to come down to the station. Who was this guy? And Mrs. Presley said, well, he was nervous about his record being played. He went to see a double feature western at the Sue Lewis Theater. <laughs> so they got in their truck and they went down, walked up and down the dark aisles, and here's Elvis sitting there all by himself. They whispered to him about the excitement being generated by That's All Right Mama, brought him down to the station. I happened to meet him that night, and he remained my friend until the day he left the planet. I am here this morning to read the joint proclamation for this day. So that is exactly what I'm going to do now, and then I'll get off, because I know you're all cold. <laughs> Whereas Elvis Aaron Presley was born on this day in 1935 to Gladys Love Presley and Vernon Elvis Presley in Tupelo, Mississippi. And whereas, at the age of 13, Elvis moved to Memphis, Tennessee, where his distinctive God-given gifts as a musician and entertainer would find their fullest voice. And whereas Elvis graduated from Humes High School in 1953, Elvis's incredible talent first came to light at 706 Union Avenue 
in downtown Memphis at Sun Studio, where he recorded for the legendary Sam Phillips and created music that rocked the world. And whereas Elvis gave the world hundreds of unforgettable songs from dozens of timeless albums, including such classics as Heartbreak Hotel, Don't Be Cruel, uh, Are You Lonesome Tonight, Suspicious Minds, and, and many, many more. Whereas Elvis interrupted his career in 1958 to serve in the United States Army, he was loved around the world, starred in more than 30 films, and made three television specials. Aloha from Hawaii, the satellite, aired in 1973 and was seen by more than a billion people, a billion as in B, around the globe. And whereas today, Elvis's unparalleled style and artistry continues to thrill audiences, create fans, and inspire new generations of musicians around the world. And finally, whereas no matter how far away his career took him, or how high his fame carried him, Elvis remained steadfastly devoted to the city of Memphis, Tennessee. It was the city that Elvis loved, the city which inspired him, and the city that he called home. Now therefore, we, Paul A. Young, mayor of the city of Memphis, and Lee Harris, mayor of Shelby County, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim this eighth day of January, 2024, as the day to celebrate the life, the work, the 89th birthday of Elvis Aaron Presley in Memphis and Shelby County, Tennessee, and call on its residents to recognize the contributions of our own king of rock and roll to music, the community, and the world. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Memphis to be affixed to this 8th day of January, 20. 24, Paul A. Young, Mayor of the City of Memphis. Also, in witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Shelby County to be affixed this 8th day of January, 2024. Signed, Lee Harris, Mayor of Shelby County. Ladies and gentlemen, that is officially our joint proclamation for the city. Thank you. over here along with Joel and the mayor. We're going to sing happy birthday and we're going to cut that incredible cake thanks to Cakes by Mom and Me for this beautiful cake here. On the count of three, are you all ready to sing happy birthday? In three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. If you're a Graceland Insider, all week we've been sharing with you little hints, teases as to what this could be that will be part of the archives here at Graceland. You can see Vice President of Archives here, Angie and Casey getting ready, and now I'm going to turn it over to Joel Weinschenker. You know, uh, what Mike had articulated uh, is so important because of this item. So if you think about it, what happened, uh, Elvis had his first commercial recording. It was so amazing, they created an acetate, and they ran it to the radio station. Uh, and if you think about that first time that the world got to hear from that acetate, now you're going to be able to hear from that same acetate. This is Elvis's first commercial recording, and the first acetate that was run to Dewey Phillips uh, to perform. Who's skeptical? Who doesn't think it's who doesn't think that's really what it is? It's okay. Anybody think? So I do believe we have a record player. Oh. Those do still exist. Yes. Uh, and I do believe we're going to play this acetate. So you'll be able to hear what so many people did on that first night. Wait, do you want to come up for this? 
Drop the needle. This record, this acetate that played on the radio, if you go back to the very beginning, it's the reason we're all here right now. So, thank you, Joel. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Elvis. And happy birthday, Elvis. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We hope that you will join us for cake and coffee across the street here in just a little bit and uh, find out more details about everything going on here at Graceland at Graceland.com. The acetate will be on display in the uh, entertain almost the entertainer museum a little bit later on today. So thank you for being here. Happy birthday, Elvis. <laughs>